Well, hello there. It's Beards and Bangers. And today I'm going to show you my new project. Yes, I've done it again. I've still managed to sell no cars, yet I have gone out and bought another car. This is a pile of junk. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. So if I think about my current fleet, so from uh, we'll go in engine size. So we've got the ZT260 4.6 V8. We've got the ZT190 2.5 V6. We've got uh, the ZTT uh, 2 litre diesel. We've got uh, the ZT 1.8 turbo. We of course have got Penny, the 2 litre diesel streetwise. And we've got Bram, the 1.8 Rover 200 BRM limited edition. Uh, but as you know, MG Rover are my first love, so don't hit the unsubscribe button or dislike the video or put nasty comments down below. I do have soft spots for other marks, um, in particular, one particular German mark from Bavaria. Yeah, that's it. I've gone and bought myself a BMW. So here is the new, excuse the, uh, the noise of agriculture in the background. Here is the new BMW project um, here on Beards and Bangers. So it is a 2003 BMW 330CI. So yes, Joseph Lloyd can drive it. It's not a 330D. It's got a straight six petrol engine, which is rather smooth. So let's have a little look round the car and uh, we haven't quite done a full, can't do a shopping list yet because it needs to get plugged in. Because it's got a, there's a few lights on the dashboard, um, but uh, Austin and uh, the, the guys at AJF are bright things, so they will no doubt sort it out. But um, yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges, which was reflected in the price. Uh, does need a bit of work. Of course, one, one thing that is beautiful is this lovely straight six engine um so we're gonna you viewers are gonna have to get used to a new engine bay here on my channel so of course we've got a longitudinally mounted engine this being a rear wheel drive bmw uh this i think is the m24 uh so straight six just shy of three liters um really quiet doesn't really rev um that hard i think the red line's at six and a half thousand but um you have to really give it some and i haven't given it that much yet um but yeah so we've got yeah canister oil filter a couple of lovely um yeah turrets there for the suspension massive um, windscreen washer has got headlight washers that pop out um haven't tested those yet um yeah everything's kind of laid out as you'd expect it um the battery is in the boot, so we'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, well, one thing I will learn how to do is to, st is to jump start it, um, because I think there's probably some, some post or something in here where you, uh, if the battery goes flat and you can't get in the boot, there's a, there's a way of getting enough power to it from, from connecting things up in here. So we'll learn how to do that. So there's the new engine bay. So get your eyes on that, get used to seeing it, because no doubt there will be some more content on this car which is half the half the idea of buying it there's its face so we well, our nostrils get bigger over the e36 and the e30 but they're not as but we've seen a three series nowadays those nostrils are enormous now they are the bmws must be really angry because the nostrils at the front are really flared so um let's have a little look at some of the other bits and bobs on the car so we've got alloy wheels not sure about these wheels yet um they are this is an M Sport, so it has got sort of M badging everywhere, it's not, but it's not an M3. Um, but yeah, these, the alloys do need refurbishing, that is for sure. But whether I stick with them is a different matter. Um, because I'm not, I've, I've seen nicer all alloy wheels on 3 Series. Um, paintwork needs a bit of correction. Uh, the arch is typical E46, we've got a bit of, bit of bubbling going on there. So we'll need to have a look, actually have a little feel. Uh, doesn't, there's no filler behind there, but it's, uh, yeah, definitely need to get that rust sorted out before it gets any worse. And obviously we'll, one thing we'll do is get, uh, get uh, AJF to get it up on the ramp and have a look underneath it and see if anything needs doing urgently on there. Um, there's, oh, there's filler behind there, which I knew. But yeah, the paint's kind of crazing there, so that needs, this needs sorting out at some point. And it will be done because this is a car that could easily have become a drift car, but uh, 
you know me, I like to keep these cars as externally original as possible and uh, give it some love and uh, have it as like a grand tourer. Uh, rear end, it's got a pretty quiet, so it has got a stainless steel back box, but it's pretty tame. Um, so that is certainly something I will look to change because uh, I, I, I do like a bit of a, I, I like to be able to hear what the engine's doing. And I know some people say, oh, you know, full stainless steel system, you know, you tr change the character of a car. For me, that's a good thing. Um, so this idea, a bit of, bit of crusty on that arch as well. That wheel's knackered. I'm guessing these are probably buckled as well. Um, I think this door is ever so slightly different to the rest of the car in terms of colour. So we'll have to have a look at that. Obviously, we've got these massive sill covers down here. So I'm hoping we're not going to find anything too untoward behind there. Uh, yeah, and this arch is beginning to bubble a little bit. Not too bad. And unusual because this is the normal side that gets peppered a bit more with stones and dirt and mud and such things. Um, but yeah, so yeah, another wheel needs refurbishing. So that's the outside. We'll have a little look at the inside. We will take it out for a drive. Um, not as a review, just as a, a sort of getting, getting you to get to know the car. Um, so we've got a lovely, chunky, very, very ergonomic steering wheel. I'll just close my camera bag. Um, this trim is loose there, so that will need some attention. I'm not sure this is original. I will have to... So obviously, I'm, I'm not... Whilst I love BMWs and have owned a few, I'm not that au fait with them, particularly the E46. Um, but yeah, we've got some some trim issues there that we'll need dealing with. Um, the aircon does work, that blows cold, which is good. Um, door cards, got a bit of trim missing or something there. Um, bit, of a, bit of a tear there, not the, not the worst thing in the world. Um, I'm sure we can do something with that at some point. Uh, headlining is good, pillar trim is beginning to go, you can probably see in the back. But you can see the seats, we haven't got black leather seats like we normally find in or beige leather, we've got Alcantara, which is actually really nice and warm. Um, yeah, lo lovely back of these cars. Um, again, I think the pillar trim could probably do with some refurbishment at some point. Um, it's got an aftermarket Kenwood double din, and I can't, I, I'm trying to remember what the correct, um, the correct head unit is for this. I'm pretty sure it should be a Blaupunkt unit of some sort. Um, electric windows all around, so your front windows drop as normal. Your rears kind of fold out like a, a louver. Um, we have got, would have had a, a, a disc changer uh, at some point. We've got a little ashtray and cigarette lighter down there. Um, cup holders <coughs> and then another ashtray at the back. Um, and this gear stick is lovely, it's really short, it's got a lovely ergonomic knob on the top and it does, it's six speed manual, so a lot of 330 coupes, having looked at quite a few over the last few weeks, um, are automatics, but this is, the, this is a manual and it's a six speed manual, so even though you've got that three litre engine, you can cruise and reduce your fuel economy quite nicely. So I think we've had enough of a look at the car for now, obviously we're going to bring you, I'll spin you around, bring you more episodes on this car, uh, but we'll take it out for a little drive, see if we can hear, well we can't really hear the engine because it's pretty quiet, um, so bear with, let's get set up to go for a drive. Right, so I'm in my usual, one of my usual uh, car kind of review stroke, doing a round the car shop places. So it's quite a bumpy road up there. So that's going to be interesting to see how it handles that. Um, if I rev the engine, really nice note. The exhaust is pretty tame, but that lovely smooth, creamy, silky sound you get from a, 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 a straight six engine. I remember my, my late father was a, a massive fan of the straight six. He was a an engineer and a physicist and he really understood um, kind of mechanics and he was you know he said the, the you know he really labored the point about the straight six being the most mechanically efficient engine uh, we'll pop the window up now you've heard the engine revving or hopefully heard it um, i don't know if you've heard it until i get back and uh, edit the video so we'll just we'll just take over this bumpy bit and see how it feels obviously it won't go too fast Now that's that's pretty smooth. If I was in the BRM, and certainly if I was in Husley, I'd be really shaking around. So 
suspension is very very wafty um, but tight at the same time so it's able to take these bumps yet yeah, going into a corner and I have um, driven around quite a sharp bend to get here this afternoon and it really is planted um, obviously I'm not pushing the car too hard at the moment because my camera just fell down that's not very good is it There we are, a bit of YouTube reality there. Oh dear, cameras, the camera's moving everywhere. Thank God GoPros have got good stabilization. Hopefully you'll stay there this time. Um, yeah, the car's really planted, but I'm not, I'm not uh, pushing it too hard because we have got lights on the dashboard uh, and I want to get those out. And the, I think the car needs a good service as well. It did come with 11 months MOT, um, but I think talking to the owner, the issue, one of the issues is it's, it's been stood for quite a lot of the time he's owned it. He's owned it for maybe two or three years, um, but he hasn't gone that far in it. And, you know, cars, all cars, especially older cars, like to be driven. Um, but this, this, is, this is, even just pottering around here, it's lovely. It's, uh, it's smooth, it's quiet. It's comfortable. These seats are lovely. Let's just uh, get out onto the straight and just open up a little bit. When these cars come past, come on guys, in your own time. So the idle's not hunting, it's not misfiring, so that's good. That's good. Um, I did put about five gallons of V power in when I got the car the other day. The owner had told me it had been standing, so you don't know how old that fuel is. Um, but I, I suspect that we're going to need some sensors. Um, it's pretty nice, pretty addictive. Um, yeah, it's, it's very quiet compared to Husley with his um, almost straight through exhaust and certainly quieter than Penny. I've not actually tested the turning circle on this yet, so let's see what that's like. It's enough. It's enough. Right, it's just uh, got a mile, mile run now, so let's see how that goes. That's lovely. I am going to enjoy driving this car. And I'm planning a couple of trips. I'm No doubt I'll be going up to Yorkshire again at least once to see young Simon from Smashing Pistons. Uh, I'm planning a trip to the southwest, Devon and Cornwall, a little bit later in the year. See a couple of folks down there. Um, and I think this could, if we can get it fixed, could be my car of choice because this is, yeah, two door, coupe it's you know it's, it's a grand tour isn't it it really is and uh you know bigger engines like this really want to be really want to be on a cruise turning circle again yeah pretty good that's tight actually that's tight so first impressions um obviously we've got a bit of a few lights to get out on the dashboard they haven't come on though the other lights which is good uh, but the, the engine management, or check engine light, sorry, you've got check engine light and EML on this one. Um, so we've got to get those out first. I think, I think I'm going to ask AJF to do full service, really flush the engine a couple of times maybe, just to, just to make sure there's no nasties in there, um, check all the levels. You know, cats, silly things like that with some of these ECUs can throw up faults. Just, you know, not enough oil or something like that. Um, and I think once that's done, it's a question of correcting the bodywork, either uh, refurbishing or changing the wheels, um, and putting a slightly more fruity sounding exhaust on. I think that's, that's probably where I'm gonna go with it, but we'll evolve and I will take you guys along for the journey as well. Um, so if you are new to my channel, if you're viewing this channel for the first time because you're a, a BMW person, a BMW owner or 
fan, then uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me I'm an idiot for buying another car. Um, there'll be enough people saying that to my face, believe me. And uh, share, share with your friends. It's, uh, it's always greatly appreciated. So thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon on the next episode of Beards and Bangers. Goodbye.